Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I came across two videos a couple of weeks ago by Haris Sultan. And in these videos he tried to argue that there's false prophecies in the hadith that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told. Now he showed many hadith. However, some of them were irrelevant to his video. And others, he basically just admitted, yeah, this prophecy came true. Now Haris Sultan isn't very impressed with some of the prophecies anyway. Nevertheless, I'm going to go over the main ones he brought up in his video, the two videos he did, and I'm going to explain and show you how Hari Sultan is ignorant. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So I'm just going to show you some hadiths where Prophet made some really, really outrageous predictions and none of them have come true. None of them will ever come true. But the second part of the same prediction is that slave girls will be giving birth to their masters. Now, we don't have any slavery, but they don't talk about that. They go, yeah, well, you know, he meant something else. Well, I'm going to speak about it. Let's go. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, was asked about signs of the last hour. The Hadith talks about signs of the last hour. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, answered first when a slave woman gives birth to her mistress. So logically, you would assume that this would have to happen first. And it's logical to assume that it happened during the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, when right hand possess was common but even if you want to sit there and say no it didn't happen that's not a problem why well watch this video clip and it will explain it for you person in islam this is islamic sharia if a person have a slave woman and he embraced her sexually and she conceived then this woman now is named ummul walad a mother of his child he cannot sell her anymore she's not a slave to be sold anymore why? Because there is a tie, which is the child which she bore in her womb from him. So now she is treated as a slave because she was a slave while her child is a free girl or a free man. Of course, once again, I'm interrupting my explanation to say that was in the past. And guess what? That will be very common before the occurrence of the Day of Judgment because this is a sign prophesized by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why would this be very common? Because basically there will be major conflict before the Day of Judgment, major war between the believers and non-believers and obviously there will be prisoners of war, slaves and this whole scenario will be repeated again. <laughs> the hour will not be established till the buttocks <laughs> of the women of the tribe of Daus move while going round and round the El Kalasa. The El Kalasa was the idol of Daus tribe, which they used to worship in the pre-Islamic period of era ignorance. So Haris Sultan laughed at this. His mind also jumped to twerking, which if you ask me is quite perverted. The Hadith, when you read it, is simply saying that towards the end of times, the Al Khalasa, the idol, will be worshipped again. Haris Sultan says his tribe doesn't exist anymore. However, the simple question is Has this happened? Has this idol been worshipped since the Prophet, peace be upon him, made his prediction? And the answer is yes. And I'm going to show you evidence now, so pause and read what's coming up on screen. The source for the book, by the way, is Akbar Makkah. So, Haris Sultan, you have to sit there and question. You at the beginning said that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says some outrageous things, yet he made this claim. Why would he go out of his way to name a specific idol, a specific tribe, a specific place? Why would he be so specific? Why would he risk his prophethood like that? And subhanAllah, it happened. The prophet predicted that this idol would be worshipped again, and it was just like he predicted. Genuine question, Harris. Does that not amaze you? Haris Sultan shows this hadith here, and he comes up with many reasons. He first of all talks about how the hadith is referring to animals. However, he concedes and says, okay, let's say it's not talking about animals, and it's talking about humans. He's trying to say it's still wrong. He then says, let's say it's talking about the people that were around Muhammad Wasallam at the time. He then shows another hadith, which I'm going to show you now, and says that if you put these together, basically, you know, it shows and it seems to indicate that Muslims believed that Judgment Day would happen within the 100 years. Now, when I read these two hadith, that's not what I get. There will be none amongst the created beings living on earth who would survive this century. So Haris Sultan has the wrong interpretation. 
And I think that's a testament to his ignorance. One night, Muhammad was leading the night prayer, and after he was done with the prayer, he said to his followers, Do you realize the importance of this night? Nobody present on the surface of the earth tonight would be living after the completion of 100 years from this night. According to another report, I heard Allah's Messenger as saying this one month before his death. You asked me about the last hour, whereas its knowledge is with Allah. I, however, take an oath and say that none upon the earth of the created beings would survive at the end of 100 years. This is in numerous sources. Obviously, this hadith is very problematic because he clearly says that no one will survive the century, which means the world will end within 100 years, and he said that in 632 AD, yet nothing happened. That's why Muslims argued very much about what this means, and they brought a very ridiculous explanation. That Muhammad just wanted to say, everyone who lives now will be dead within 100 years. And that's it. Can you actually provide us with a source, Ridwan, that says that Muslims have been arguing over this very much? Or are you just going to keep pulling this stuff out of your ass? Because for a person that has at least 5 IQ, or maybe, you know what, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you a head start. 6 IQ? They can easily understand that this hadith is referring to those people that are on the surface of the earth. Because one of these hadiths says that those who are tonight found on the surface on the earth will not live for a hundred years. It doesn't say that the world is going to end in a hundred years. And the other hadith also says that those who are upon the earth are not going to live for another hundred years, or more than it, rather. This means that if somebody new comes to the earth, if somebody is born and a new generation is born, they will pass those hundred years because they weren't upon the earth before that. But you can't understand these simple logical things, can you, Ridwan? Because you do seem like that type of guy who probably passed his logic barely because he was bored in class. Why would Muhammad just say something like that? What is the point of that? Why would Muhammad say, this is a very important night, because in 100 years you will be all dead, and then other people will live? Okay. That's not even true. It is virtually impossible that no one survived those 100 years, considering that we have always had people who live beyond 100 years, and we most definitely had them at that time as well. And the hadith also includes all creatures on the surface of the earth. And there are so many animals, so many creatures that live far beyond 100 years. Muhammad was clearly delusional, and he made a promise of the end of the world with numbers that never came. Why would Allah's favorite last prophet, who is fully guided by Allah, who is sent to wake up humankind and bring them the final message, the final guide by Allah, make such an empty doomsday promise, a failed promise, and leave it to his devout Muslim followers to reinterpret these failed prophecies? So let me get this straight. What you're telling me, Radvan, is that it is not impossible during the medieval ages for a person to be born in such tough conditions, by the way, when people would usually die when they're 50 or 60 or 70, and this was the peak age usually, and seeing somebody live for a hundred years was very, very, very rare. Mind you, there was only one Sahabi that lived that much, according to certain hadiths. In any case, what you're trying to tell me is that a person has to be born on that night, right? Because that's the standard of the hadith. People who are on the surface of the earth in that night, are not going to live for more than a hundred years. So a person would have to be born on that same night and then live up to a hundred or more years. Radvan, back then, people were not born at such frequent rates as they are right now. And for such an occurrence to happen, that specifically on that night, a baby would be born that is going to live up to a hundred years or more, is seemingly impossible. Let's have a look at another one. Prophet Muhammad said that I and the last hour have been sent like this and he while doing it, join the forefinger with the middle finger. Sahih Muslim. This is how Prophet Muhammad and Judgment Day has been sent, meaning so close to each other. This is why I said that when he said it here and people assumed that he was talking about um, Judgment Day within 100 years because of quotes like this, that God has sent him and the judgment day like this, so close to each other, 14 centuries, 
is that what you mean by close prophet muhammad 1400 years and still there's no sign of any um any judgment day the biggest issue with these hadiths that Harith Sultan is bringing up, the ones that he says are false prophecies, is that he doesn't seem to understand basic Islamic theology. What do I mean by this? Well, in what you just saw, he gave an example of what the Prophet did with his finger and his middle finger. He then drew a parallel to the non will survive 100 years a century, which I've already addressed. And then he seemed to put his own twist on things and said, look, they believe that the Day of Judgment would happen in their lifetime would happen really close now we know for a fact the prophet peace be upon him didn't know when the day of judgment was how do we know this from the quran as you can see allah told the prophet peace be upon him to say the knowledge is with allah alone and i am only sent with a clear warning so all the prophet peace be upon him said was that the judgment day is close and there are plenty of hadith where he gave signs you've gone over some of them there are plenty more Haider sultan and you should know from your time as a Muslim, there's the minor signs and the major signs. When the minor signs finish, the major signs will start. Another way you can look at this is the Prophet, peace be upon him, is warning that your day of judgment is coming in a sense that when you meet your death, that's it. You know, there's nothing you can do now until you get to judgment day. And that is basically Harith Sultan's biggest argument that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said it's close. This was close, that was close. Yet, you know, 1400 years later, here we are. He doesn't understand how the Prophet, peace be upon him, didn't know when the last hour would happen, the day of judgment would happen. All he was told was it's close and he gave warning to people. He's giving a warning to you, Harris. When you choose to reject it, well, that's your choice. I choose to listen to it. Okay, next one. I heard Allah's messenger saying the last hour would come when the Romans would form a majority amongst people. The last hour would come when Romans would form a majority. We're the Romans. <laughs> Romans are only in Rome now. There's no Roman Empire left. There's no Roman, there's not even a holy Roman Empire left. Byzantine Empire is long gone as well. There would never be a majority. Italy is never going to be a superpower. The next superpower is going to be China, at least for another, I don't know, maybe two, three hundred years, unless something really crazy happens. Okay, next one. The Prophet said the greatest war, the conquest of Constantinople and the coming forth of the Dajjal Antichrist will take place within the period of seven months. We know that the Constantinople was conquered, what, in 1428 or something like that? Something in the 15th century by the Ottomans. And the coming forth of the Dajjal will take place within a period of seven months. That hasn't happened. The Hadith is daif. The Hadith is inauthentic. It's weak. So we reject it. You know, we don't, we don't need to look at it. It's irrelevant. Now, somebody may sit there and say, of course you're going to reject it. El Albani is a scholar of Hadith. Scholars of Hadith don't grade stuff according to their whims and desires. It's according to its criteria, as strict criteria, by looking at the people in the chain of narration, the authenticity, and so much stuff. I mean, you can watch videos on YouTube, or you can read books on Ilm al-Rajal, Ulm al-Hadith, and you can learn about these things. In conclusion, this is irrelevant because the Hadith is inauthentic. The Prophet said the flourishing state of Jerusalem will be when Yathrib is in ruins. The ruined state of Yathrib will be when Great War comes. The outbreak of the Great War will be at the conquest of Constantinople and the conquest of Constantinople when the Jal comes forth. So he, the Prophet, struck his tie or his shoulder with his hand and said this is as true as you are here or as you are sitting <laughs> now there's a reason why this is hassan do you know why because it's found in other places where it is daif it is also found in the musnad of imam ahmed and it was qualified as daif by the muhaddith shu'aib al arnat and also the muhaddith sahih ibn abi shayba now why is this because in all the chains there is somebody called Abdul Rahman ibn Thabit ibn Thawban who is qualified to be Da'if. And in the book Mizan al Ittidal, Imam al Daibi considered this narration by Abdul Rahman ibn Thabit ibn Thawban as one of his munkar. So we can drop it like that. But if you want to sit there and say, no, this is real, 
let's assume that Hadith has some soundness to it then. The flourishing state of Jerusalem could mean that it will flourish by people, money and real estate. And the ruined state of Yahrib could mean in the context the reason for that. And the other meaning for the flourishing of Jerusalem could be that the Khalafa will settle down there at the end of time, which goes ahead on another narration in Sunan Abi Dawud, and that is Sunan Abi Dawud 2535, which is Sahih. The ruined state of Yahrib will be when the Great War comes, was explained as a great war between the people of Levant and the Rome. Going back to the Hadith, the one that Harith Sultan showed, it has a problem, as it says the ruined state of Yahrib will be before the Jal comes forth as we have Sahih Hadith that tell us Ajal won't be able to enter Yathrib but Ibn Kathir tried to explain this by saying that Medina won't be ruined totally before the Ajal comes at the end of time. Next hadith, the hour would not be established until the happiest of people in the world is Luka bin Luka. <laughs> That's also a Sahih hadith. Now, now, what is Luka bin Luka? Have a look. So, in other reports, it said soon the Luka bin Luka will take over this world. So, these people, Luka ibn Luka, will take over the world. This world will not end until it belongs to the Luka ibn Luka. The word Luka is used to indicate foolishness, ignorance, or unworthy characteristics. Luka ibn Luka is a mean fool, son of a mean fool who follows purely his whims and desires to achieve this world at the expense of moral or religious value. He will be the most he will be the most fortunate in terms of respect, wealth, status, and luxury. He will hold position of authority and be in charge of worldly affairs. will fight the Arabian Peninsula and victory will be granted by Allah. Then you will fight the Romans and victory will be granted by Allah. Victory will be granted by Allah. Jabi said, the Jal will not appear until you have fought the Romans. Now, have a look again. So, Muhammad is predicting. So, two of the events happened just about his lifetime. Um, he conquered the whole of Arabian Peninsula and Romans were start, started getting defeated within uh, five years after his death. So, these uh, the first two things are hap happening quite quite um, quickly but now 1400 years later still there's no sign of the jal so he debunks himself there and the reason why i put that last clip in is to basically reiterate what i mentioned earlier how Harith sultan conflates things you know he sits there and he thinks that because prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said or put his two fingers together and said the hours close and signified the hours close and all these things and the Jal still isn't here and the world hasn't ended proves Islam false. That's essentially what he's trying to say and therefore proves the false prophecies. Well, I've gone over the main ones in his videos and I've shown you how it's not. I'll get back to that later, but I want to focus on the fallacious logic. Okay. When you have uh, friends coming over, Harris Sultan, or you're speaking to somebody and they say, oh yeah, just give me one second or just give me two seconds, or, just give me five minutes. Do you literally count to five minutes? Do you literally count to two seconds? No, you do not. It's figurative, isn't it? We've already established that the last hour, the knowledge of the hour, when it is, belongs to Allah alone. When the Prophet peace be upon him was asked about signs of the last hour, he gave many. Okay, Some of them have happened today and some of them haven't. So let's think about this logically. The reason why the world hasn't ended and Ajal hasn't come, whatever way you want to think about it first, is because not all the signs have happened. Now there are only a couple of signs left if you speak to scholars. Then there's only two, maybe three. When these eventually happen, and they will happen, the rest have happened, so this will happen, we can expect the Jal to come soon. But when will he come? We do not know. That knowledge is with Allah. And then when the Jal comes, the rest of the signs will happen. And then Judgment Day will eventually happen. But when is that day? I can't tell you. Because as it says in the Quran, that knowledge only belongs with Allah. So to basically summarize before I show you the last couple of clips, Harith Sultan employs fallacious logic. He thinks there are false prophecies because Muhammad said it's close or, you know, he 
put two fingers together and the world hasn't ended. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's just stupid. It's stupid. He also clearly didn't do his research properly. At the end of his video, it's part two, he says this. But no, one thing that you can be certain of is that absolutely nothing special about these predictions, prophecies, absolutely nothing. I'm just going to show you some hadiths where Prophet made some really, really outrageous predictions and none of them have come true. None of them will ever come true. Which one is it, Harris? You said in part one that you made some outrageous claims that never happened and that will never happen, but obviously you are wrong and I proved you wrong. Then at the end you said there's nothing special about these predictions. Let's focus on the Deal Khalasa one. You said, and you laughed at it, but it happened and I give evidence it happened. I mean, are you not genuinely blown away? Drop your arrogance, Harry Sultan, for a second. Just drop it. Think about it. Why would the Prophet, peace be upon him, risk everything if he was a liar like you probably believe he was? And mention an idol by name that would be worshipped. And why would he mention the tribe? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ri such a ridiculous prediction to make. And it happened. Now, I do want to point out that Harry Sultan did show other hadith in his video. And linked in the description is Brother Dawa's response, where he goes over some of these hadith that Harry Sultan showed, which I didn't talk about because they're irrelevant to this video where I was debunking false prophecies. Harry Sultan mentioned a couple of things that I didn't talk about. He mentioned how some prophecies came true, which I don't know why, but I think he's trying to say that, oh, you know, these things happen, but it's irrelevant because they're not really special. He gave a hadith where it talks about people competing in the building of mosques. He talked about how Muslims will be fighting each other on a large scale. And he admits these things have happened. In his video as well, he tries to say that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam was a racist. Now, obviously, I've debunked that claim already. If you go into my playlist section, I've put together a playlist which refutes his claim. This is irrelevant to Harith Sultan's video, though, where he tries to show just false prophecies. So why is he bringing all these other stuff into it? If you are interested in the hadith he used to try and argue this, it's on screen now. This is talking about the Mongols. It's given a description. And, you know, if you were a witness in a crime and the police asked you to give you a description of the culprit, the suspect, you know, the, cr the criminal, and you described him as six foot four, white skin, ginger hair, a flat nose, big teeth, are you being racist? No, you are not. You're giving a description. So I don't understand how this is racist. And guess what? The Prophet Peace People only got the description right, having never met the Mongols. So are you not impressed, Harris? Again? Anyway, that's it. A short video, a short refutation. I just thought I'd let you know, Harris, in case you're watching. It took me longer to watch your videos than to make this response. It doesn't take any effort at all to simply fact check and read. And that's a testament to your ignorance and clearly your dedication to your channel, and you have the nerve to sit there and say to people, PayPal me, support me. Come on, Harris. Anyway, guys, I hope you find some benefit from this. Inshallah, it helps you. And if anybody tries to argue or false prophecies or whatever, or they try to link you Harris Sultan's video, you can link in my response. Be sure to check out the links in the description. And Inshallah, I'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.